Anong kasngi bansa jinkan mau ya kejala mikhalia haga ba umudri rang ba kejala ukunrat sangma ulapli pat ba ya ka CM Elevate program kebala penlong ha vivanta shilong kani ka long shibanta kum kalat pan ai bor pan ai kam ai jam bat ban wan ra ya ka roi ka par ha kejala hi bro ka wei jing pelat ya ka CM Elevate program ka long ban kenjo ya ka thong Ban ai kam ai jam, ban ai borik samla, jong ke jela, leng ba ka seng kam seng jam. Susu menteri rang ba ala berab da ke baong ba ke sorkar, kan kersan pisa, ke ban sedang naduk lai pesan, syaduk nyau pesan persen, na kan benda ke ni ke projek. Bat na ke ni ke projek, ke ma arpa wajar ngut ki brio, na ke leng saudong ke jela, hak ni ki lais nyam ki ban wan, kin sa yo jing mentoi. Hak ni ke sengi lai don lang ru ba po leng do. Menteri Ketenat Jungok Kai Perdai, Kekong Amparin Lengdo, Ke Menteri Ketenat Kekoi Kakia, Ba Eyal Hek, U Abu Taha Mandal, U Ba Shakliar Warjri, U Ba Rakham E Sangma, Ba Koming Wan Yemban, U Marquis Marak, Kia Mali, Ki Officer, Bat Kiri Upoj Bah. I was overjoyed to witness young entrepreneurs proudly participating in various enterprising activities. I speak as a testimony to what I have seen happening in the districts across the state of Meghalaya. Critics very often engage in negative comments as to why the Honorable Chief Minister and his cabinet are launching various programs which focus only on one and one important thing and that is can we enthuse our young people to go back to their roots and to take up very important programs that will help in marketing the state of Meghalaya. We have seen the magic happen in Lakadok Turmeric. It is now a joyous, joyous moment to see that Lakadong turmeric is now a popular item in very important linkages from Amazon down the line. I have also met farmers producer groups, young entrepreneurs engaging in ginger mission. I cannot imagine that you could actually create this enthusiasm as much as I have experienced it everywhere I went. I was very, very happy to see that young people now are returning back to the farming practices. I've never seen VECs with so much enthusiasm not believing that it is very doable and possible to get done. Honorable Chief Minister, your dream, you have piped a dream which is doable. And for this, we salute you, sir. And we believe that it is but natural for you to have another scheme to top up all the schemes that you have started, whether it was focus one, focus two. Then you went on to so many other schemes, which today has become the buzzword of young Meghalians. In generation, people understand the word of scheme. You will not get money which is doled out to you where you will not be accountable. We will help you, but you need to help yourself and clear your bank loans. We will help you, but you must make sure that that chain doesn't selfishly break with your laziness. We are appealing to young people across the state of Meghalaya. Arise, wake up, and join the modern generation of workers who look at the government not with a pathetic expectation, but look at the government, expect from their government to engage productively with them. I am confident that with Elevate, we will have more people returning to agricultural practices. We will have more mothers 
who will say, my son need not go for a government job. This is also an appeal to parents. You cannot expect any government to bring a government job for you at your doorstep. You have to encourage your children to be enterprising, to inculcate skills, to have thrift as a practice in their lives. If we believe in the chief minister's scheme that calls this, that is called CMLUV, then we have all have to join hands. You cannot expect the scheme and the government officials alone to function. You have to participate. You have to ensure that your days of job seeking are over and that you will be your own boss and that you will work hard so that you will create other job opportunities for other unemployed youth in your neighbor neighborhood. Today, interestingly, we had a very long day at the Legislative Assembly. I don't know how many young people watch what their leaders are debating about in the Legislative Assembly. Most of you just read snippets of information and news on the social media which puts down the government. That is their duty. Gone are the generations of citizens who only look at a job as a 10 to 5 job in the government sector. Today, our kids have multiple plans for their own lives. I doubt if you'll find a child, starting from my generation, my kids, who say, I line up in front of an office and apply for a job where 5,000 other people are applying for the same job. I speak because I have seen that it is doable and it is happening everywhere. Talk about the pineapples. Today, we are packaging these pineapples across the globe. Who would have imagined that our pineapple would find value in international markets? Let me tell you by experience that I have been through some of the most successful food processing centers. I have seen the black pepper, I have seen the powdered spices, I have seen elaichi, I have seen, name it, anything that you have in agriculture is now being packaged and bottled. How do you start the process? You can only start the process if you have a government and a chief minister who can provide you with the wherewithal where to create this plethora of job opportunities. I have also seen, not just in the agri department, I have also seen how veterinary is doing very well. Our entrepreneurs today are no longer afraid. That everything in life happen, happens for a reason. And uh, when I look back and think about those days, uh, maybe one of the more defining days for me as an individual, the struggles that I went through as an entrepreneur, the challenges I faced, uh, and how we uh, managed those challenges uh, also shaped the way I used to I look at things now and uh, also shaped the way I think now for a lot of things. So I, I, I really look back to those times and as I said, uh, the genesis of what we've been trying to do with entrepreneurship in the last five years has been those moments that actually uh, defined uh, my thought process about entrepreneurship. And so when uh, in 2018, when we came into the government, I took it personally that uh, we must do something for entrepreneurs. And I have been always, I have been an entrepreneur, I still am, and the testimony to that is that I even have my own political party. So my entrepreneurship even goes to politics, where uh, I believe that uh, whatever certain ideas and beliefs you have, you take it forward and the challenges will come, it will be difficult, be it business, be it politics or be it any walk of life. Uh, but I think it's the passion that's inside you that matters the most. It's what you believe in and it's what you want to achieve that really drives you to do things in life. And I think that's the spirit with which I connect. And that's a spirit which I've been trying to promote. That's a culture which I've been trying to bring into our state. 
And so when the Prime program started, it was the beginning of the different ideals that we were building up towards what is happening today. And uh, a lot of people worked, of course, to make it what it is. So Prime, of course, is the initial program for entrepreneurship. Many people have been touched by the work that the Prime organization has been doing. Those who don't know, Prime is a program where we started supporting entrepreneurs and uh, almost uh, close to 3,000 entrepreneurs have been in one way or the other touched, supported, uh, financially given uh, support, trained, marketing linkage, so on and so forth. And um, so what we are doing today is what we learned for the past five years and uh, how we thought that we should now take things to a new level and to be very frank, how to elevate uh, even prime and even elevate what we have been doing for the past many years. Uh, because apart from the fact that I believe that passion should drive you in what you do, whether it's in society, whether it's in politics or in business or any walk of life, I also believe that uh, overall uh, uh, entrepreneurship in general uh, is something that uh, you know that is uh, going to be a driving force for any economy. Uh, you know, so uh, all different kind of institutional setups that we could create, whether it's through entrepreneurship, self-help groups, IBCS, FPOs, all of this has been done in the last five years. So hundreds and thousands of groups have been created. While we created this group, giving them financial support, mission mode programs came in. And these mission mode programs were done for agriculture mainly, but also in terms of our veterinary uh, department, animal husbandry department, those processes were done. At the same time, we had, uh, we won't call it mission mode as such, but it was a very focused approach even for tourism. And hence, uh, you must be wondering why only three ministers' photos are there. Uh, I don't, uh, I hope the other ministers don't uh, take it otherwise. It's not that you are not part of uh, what we're doing. But uh, the programs in CM Elevate are limited to these three sectors as of now. As of now, I'm saying. Because um, like any other program, we are also learning as we move along. You know, after a few months, we, re we, re we may realize that we need to in involve sports in this entire thing. So tomorrow, if somebody wants to start a sports club, you know, can we help them? So surely we can. So we will think about it and we're open to it. Suddenly we realize that, you know, we need more money for it uh, to be done. And uh, therefore we may require a different kind of support. So all of these thought processes are open and we will definitely look into it. So we are looking at all these different mission mode programs that are going on. And why are we doing all these mission mode programs? We also realize that we need to develop the skills at the grassroots level. So you will also see that the Megala Skills Program and the MS, MSSDS program that we're doing is also ensuring that we're mapping the investments we're making able to support these entrepreneurs, feed them with the kind of products that they require. At the same time, we're looking at all of these industries, realizing these skills are required, and hence the MSDSs and uh, other departments are looking at the skill aspect also to create the manpower and train them to be able to feed these industries. So what I'm trying to tell you is that we're not just doing things uh, because they just look nice and they sound nice. We have a plan. And this plan is a very detailed plan. I've just shared with you just the basic blueprint of what we have done. But if you go into this micro detailing of this huge map that I can see very clearly in front of my eyes and you know in my mind, is because that's all we think about every day. And uh, and we see it, you know, and my team sees it, and we keep working on it. So what we are seeing today is a, a very, very important component of the larger picture and the plan that we have for our state. And CM Elevate program is going to be one of the main programs and that's why I requested all our ministers, MLAs to be here today because we need your help. We need your support. We need your people to come in because I don't want this to be a program. I mean, forgive me for saying this, I, uh, but I have to say it. I don't want this to be a program where we say it's only a Shillong or a Tura program or a Jawai program. So many of you have ideas and you want to do things, but some way or the other, you don't get the support. Well, we want to ensure that we make it very easy for you to do that. And that's really what we're trying to do. And I'm sure that with 20,000 entrepreneurs, it's not a small number, it's huge. And uh, 300 crores is what we are looking at. But as I said, we are not going to cap it at 300. If the necessity is there, if the opportunity is there, 
And if we see the kind of returns that will come in terms of the overall increase in our GDP, uh, we'll be happy to invest more. There was a question today, it did not come up, where uh, you know the question was how many uh, jobs in the private sector uh, have been created. Uh, I'll be happy to inform you that in the last five years, based on whatever numbers we could collect, there are different programs that the government did in the last five years, which was not as planned as it is today. We are almost touching close to three lakh jobs that we have been able to create in the private sector in the last five years. And I believe that's a great number because uh, as uh, Dr. Vijay again was mentioning that we are not a society that is you know, uh, into business and taking risk and uh, entrepreneurship uh, culture is something that is taking a bit of time. So keeping all these factors in mind, uh, we were able to create that kind of number and I'm sure that now with concerted effort and the way we are moving forward this time, that the numbers will be much, much larger. Uh, you will see that even the numbers in terms of the GSDP that we see in consequent years, you will see the numbers improve to a large extent in the coming years. Uh, Meghalaya has seen a lot of challenges and I must conclude by saying that, that we are not saying everything is great. You know, uh, there are huge challenges we face. You know, a lot of problems were there. Our numbers were very bad. Uh, you remember, you know, there was a time when uh, the number of children who were vaccinated in our state were uh, the worst. You know, we were at rank 28. There is no rank below that. So at that point in time, we were 28 rank when it came to vaccination of children. You know, and we called the team and we said, this cannot happen. You need to do something about it. Let's push this and get things done. And in a matter of three years, from being 28th rank, that means the worst in the country, in three years, we were number two rank. And we are, our vaccination percentage went up from 50% to 95%. So it's not that, you know, everything is great for us. There are challenges, but as, you know, Bapal mentioned, that it depends on you whether you want to look at these challenges as problems or as opportunities. So we look at it as opportunities. We had 4,000 houses that had water supply. 4,000 houses. Today, we are almost touching 4 lakh houses in a matter of 2 years time. 4 lakh houses today have a drinking water. So, so many people can look at this and Megala and say, oh, you only had 4,000, how bad? You know, that's fine. But we don't look at it at that point. We look at it as a challenge and an opportunity to help our people. And with the hard work of the PhD department today, we are, uh, as I said, one of the best performing states in the country. If that government's role is limited to creating policies, providing the ecosystem, and being able to give the, uh, the different facilities to help the entrepreneurs really come up. And it is the entrepreneurs who will ultimately drive the economy and take it to the level that we want. Oh, so hence, government has a specific, and to be very frank, a limited role to play. And hence, until unless we don't push entrepreneurship to a new level, uh, we will not achieve the kind of goals that we've been targeting. Having said that, uh, we have not limited our exercise just to entrepreneurs. We realize that we have different levels in society. And hence, if we really want an overall economic growth, the development and the work has to start at different levels. So hence, entrepreneurs have a role to play. In the last five years, as you are all aware, I have repeated this I think millions of times, that in the last five years alone, we have created over 40,000 self-help groups, which means we have engaged 4 lakh women in different economic activities, distributing close to 500 crores to these groups. This is very significant, keeping in mind that in the last 45 years, there were only 4,000 groups and only about 30 crores was distributed to them. That increased from 4,000, 5,000 groups today to 40 plus thousand groups. And from 30 crores, we have given them 500 crores. Similarly, if we look at all the farmers and the farmer producer groups that we have created, again, you know, close to about 400, 500 crores has been distributed to the different producer groups. About close to 20,000 groups have been formed and we will continue to form more groups. And this small money, seed money that we give them, allows them to do the economic activities, which sometimes, just for a matter of 5,000, 10,000 or 15,000 rupees, the farmers were not able to buy the seeds at the right time. So these kind of small supports were given to different producer groups and that has really helped them.